Hi, this is Lou. Welcome to my channel and welcome to a series of art tutorials all inspired by the beautiful and ancient city of Edinburgh. I've lived in Edinburgh for over 10 years now and I'd like to take you with me to share some of my favourite locations and activities in the city through the medium of art. So let's get painting. Today I'm going to be uh, painting the Writers Museum in Edinburgh which is a really interesting looking building. It's on Lady Stairs Close, which is kind of just tucked away behind the Royal Mile. So I'm going to be doing it in line and wash. So I've got my pen to make the lines. This is a waterproof uh, fine liner pen. Um, I've got a pencil and a, an eraser for sketching. And then I've got some watercolours. So this is my little set of watercolours. So I will tell you the exact pigments I'm using, but don't worry too much about it. Um, I'm sure that if you've got a little set of watercolours like this, you'll have something that you can substitute for it. I've got a couple of brushes here. These are both kind of pointy round brushes. Um, this one's a size six and this one's a one. I quite li like using fairly small ones, just gives me a little bit more control, but feel free to use some larger ones if you like. Um, and then I've got some water and my paper towel. I'm going to be working on hot pressed watercolour paper today. Uh, it, you don't have to, um, but um, I'm going to turn these into prints and the smooth surface of the hot pressed paper uh, makes it much easier to remove the backgrounds for make, and kind of clean up the prints. So that's why I'm using this one. Before we leap into this project today, I just thought I'd get a sketchbook out and have a little bit of a, a sketch and a play and a talk to you about different types of perspective. So perspective is just a way of making 3D things work on a 2D page. The kind of classic ways are like one point, two point, three point perspective and multi-point perspective as well. So one point perspective, you'd start with horizon line. Now this wouldn't necessarily be a line that you could actually see in your reference image or if you're on location. If you were standing on a perfectly flat plane or looking out to sea or something like that, that would be the horizon line. And it's kind of always there behind everything else. But if you've got hills and buildings and streets and stuff in the way, you probably wouldn't be able to see it. But it's just useful to know that it's there. And then for one point perspective, all the lines in your uh, drawing tend to one point. So most buildings are kind of made up of different boxes, different kind of rectangles. Of course, if you don't have a correct, perfectly right angled lines, then this isn't going to work very well. Um, so you always have to adjust for th like things in real life. But wherever you've got a corner, you draw a line towards that vanishing point, which is this little mark on the horizon line. And I can put the, like, the back of the building on here, just like this. So there's my little kind of wireframe diagram of a little box. And then if you're making this into a building, you would get rid of any of the lines that you wouldn't actually be able to see. And you can put in things like doors and windows so on the front face of the building, where, where, which is facing you, everything is either horizontal or vertical. So any windows in there will be horizontal and vertical like this. But on the side of the building, all of the lines would converge on that vanishing point. So let's put in a line of windows down that side, like that. And maybe there's a door on that side too and the top of the door would converge to that vanishing point. And then you can draw buildings out the other way as well. So let's have one here. Let's make this one much taller. There we go. And then the lines from the corner of that building tend towards the vanishing point. Let's put in the back of that. And then let's say this is like an office block and it's got kind of rows of windows like this on this side they'd all be horizontal and vertical lines. And then on the sides of the building, all of the lines of the windows will tend towards that point. Something like that. For two point perspective, you're essentially doing this thing that we're doing on the side of the building, but you're doing it in both ways. So again, we've got a horizon line, comes out here. 
and this time we have two points on it. So two vanishing points, one there and one there. And then this time we put in a building, let's put in a horizontal line for the corner of the building. And these lines tend towards the vanishing point. And then we can put in a line here and a line here. So then let's put in a door for this one. So there's the two verticals. In this case, all of the verticals are just going up and down, but any of the horizontals will tend towards those points. Let's put in the line for the windows at the top. There we go, there's some windows there. And then here on this side, let's have some windows again, and then maybe a door on this side as well. And there's the top of the door. So this is what we're gonna be doing today with the, the, the building that I'm drawing. The thing is, in real life, buildings have got all sorts of weird random bits that aren't exactly at right angles. So we'll see a few little variations from that. But essentially, this is the screen that we're following. I've had a couple of questions in the past, like what happens if you can't see the vanishing points? And that's usually quite often the case. Sometimes one of them is on the page and then the other one will be off. And you just have to guess. You just have to kind of estimate. So this isn't um, necessarily something that you have to kind of draw every time. It's just something that you have to kind of bear in mind when you're drawing a building that will help you to get this kind of form looking right. Now I mentioned there's other points of perspective as well. So let's have a look at three point perspective. So for this one, I have a vertical line as well. And I'm gonna put a vanishing point up there and then two horizontal vanishing points. And then in this case, any um, horizontal lines will tend towards these vanishing points. And any vertical ones will tend towards the top here. So here is our random looking building with its windows and its door. And then the same on this side. Oops, gone a bit off there. There's the door there. There's a window and there's a window. And this has the effect of making it look like you're really low down and you're kind of looking up at a building, which is quite often the case as you're, as you're looking at them. But it makes you kind of feel really quite small. So it's really good for kind of tall towering buildings like skyscrapers and kind of big pointy churches and things. Uh, so that's three point perspective. And then multi point perspective is because uh, you don't always have buildings that are at right angles to one another. And if you've got buildings that are at weird angles to one another, then you'll need to put in different perspective points for each building. So let's draw one on here. Uh, I'm gonna draw two point perspective little building here. So there we go. There's our little building there. And then let's say I want to have another building here, but actually it's on a different plane. So it's, it's not actually at right angles with this one it's actually slightly different. So I can put in two more vanishing points here. Oh, I have one there. And this is quite often what real life looks like because you get kind of curved streets and things that are at like, yeah, odd angles or kind of higgledy piggledy. So real, real life is a little bit more like this. And I'm going to be doing some scenes a little bit later on in this series where we look at a few different buildings together and they're not necessarily at right angles to one another. And working out how they sit next to one another um, is going to be a little bit more like this than like any of these kind of neat schemes up here. 
So I'm going to start out with doing a pencil sketch. Feel free to go straight in with pen if that's what you would like to do. Um, but I'm going to use the pencil just because I want to get everything kind of mapped out and to kind of be sure of where things are going before I start doing anything kind of irreversible. So I'm going to put a reference image that I'm using up here and there'll be a link to that on my website as well. So there'll be um, a link in the description box if you want to follow along. I'm going to start by putting in a vertical line. So this is the kind of the corner of the building that's closest to me. That's going to go down here. I've got the right hand side of the building coming down here and the left hand side will be down here. Something like that. And then I've got those vanishing points. So I've got my horizon line somewhere. So probably about here. Now in the picture, I'm uphill from the building that I'm drawing. So my horizon line is quite, quite high up on the building. Um, maybe it's even higher than that. It doesn't really matter for getting the perspective to look right. As long as you follow the rules, it should be fine. So I'm just gonna move that a little bit further over. I'm gonna put one vanishing point actually on the paper. So that's gonna be there. And all of the lines on this kind of right side of the building are gonna head off in that direction. And the one on the left hand side is actually gonna be like over here somewhere. So you're not really gonna see very well where the end of that line is. But I'm just gonna try and imagine like an imaginary point somewhere over here and make sure that all my lines kind of head off in that direction. As you can see, my straight lines aren't all that straight. And if you want to use a ruler or something like that, then you're perfectly well within your rights to do that. So I'm putting some like rough guidelines on here and I may come, I may very well change where these go, but I've kind of divided it up into one, two, three, four, five little blocks um, and kind of roughly the same height. So some of these will correspond with like the tops of roofs and windows and things like that. And then other ones won't. And it's a, it's a bit of an interesting building. There's a lot going on and nothing's quite at the same level. So, uh, so I've got to bear that in mind. The thing I need to do now is that this corner of the building, it's not exactly a square. It's got like a, a 45 degree face on it. So I'm going to put two lines down like this on either side of the central line and give myself some lines to face to give me direction on that face of the building. Now I can start mapping in the rest of the building, working out where I want different things to be and uh, starting to put in like doors and windows and kind of the big shapes like that. So I'm going to start here and uh, start at the bottom and just put in some shapes like there's a doorway and I can make that a rectangle and then there's like a slightly thicker line around there and that's not a bad place for it. Um, just some interesting bits of stone. There's like another little window above that, maybe about half the height of the door. Um, and then there's a bit of a gap. And then there is like a, a balcony thing sticking out. Like this. And it's got a rounded like a rounded bit on the top. Like you can imagine like Rapunzel hanging out of. And then another window like above that. Let's get the top of that window to the right kind of angle. And then more bits of decorative like stonework and we're nearly at the top and 
uh, there is like a, a dome on the top. Like a circle kind of sticking out with like a dome shape on the top and then a pointy bit. Along here is the top of a roof. Yeah, and then the side of this tower is kind of coming down on this side of the building here. Um, there is, what features have we got here? There is a sign sticking out of the building there, like that. Looks like that. I'll just put in a little squiggle for the minute. And there are a few little kind of bits of random roof and chimney in here. There, like that. Along here, there are some more windows and doors there, but this kind of bit of the building is so kind of, so kind of far away from us around this corner that it's really kind of quite hard to see what's going on here. But I'll just put in a few little marks for some windows and then there's a bit of a chimney at the top. Uh, there might be like another bit of building sticking out on the end. So this building, kind of the bit of the building going this way, now I can work on that. And like maybe halfway up these doors is the line for the top of some windows. Oops. So I can see two windows in there. And again, all of these lines are gonna to head towards that vanishing point. Now the second window is hidden behind some stairs. So I've got to decide whether I'm gonna put those in or whether I'm just gonna imagine that they're not there. I could try and put the stairs in and have like a, a kind of curved S shape kind of bit coming towards me there. That could be quite interesting, but I'm getting a bit close to the bottom of the page. So we'll see. We'll see whether I get it in or not. Um, above those windows, there's another two windows. The window sills like a little bit below that line. And then the top of those windows is about halfway up that window there. And none of these windows are lined up with each other. Uh, here are some windows that are lined up with one another above these ones. Like that. I'm quite sure at the minute where the bottom is. But we can work on that. So yet yeah, the balcony kind of is at the same level as this like bottom of this little balcony here and it sticks out a little bit. So if I've got lines kind of coming out this way, they need to head towards this point here, like that. And the same on the other side. So this line here needs to line up to there. So there's my little balcony sticking out and I can give it a little a little support. It's bigger support on this side than on that side, which is confusing. That's the charm of these buildings. They're all different. And then the railings for this uh, balcony, this line is going to come to there. And then this line goes to that cross. And the line there as well. And then they've got 
like a little interesting circle design here kind of come out a bit. So a few squiggly pencil lines just give me an indication where some of those features are and I can change the places of them later as long as I've got kind of something in there to remind me then I can kind of come back to it and go oh yeah that's that's not quite in the right place I can move it a little bit later on. Let's continue up the building this way and then directly in between these two windows is the door that comes out onto the balcony like that. It's going to be quite dark. And then above that is the edge of the roof. And the edge of the roof actually ends up kind of being, ends up kind of at the same height as the top of this little circular bit here. And there's some flashing and actually I'm going to bring that top down a little bit. So we've got one, two, three bits of the building blocked in. I'm going to do this fourth one and let's see. It's quite hard to work out where the edge of the building should be. I think I've got it too far. Let's bring it in a bit. And then at the same height of the top of these windows is a bit that sticks out. And it's kind of curved a little bit. And then on there is a window and the top of the window and the bottom of the window lines up kind of with these ones except that it's stuck out a little bit further so if I just make them a tiny bit higher it's actually a bit narrower. So. There we go. There's a bit above there, not sure what it is. Another window. It's directly above that one. So I need to make my lines line up. And then above it, some little curved details like that. And a little sticky up bit. And actually they stick up much further than the roof so I must make them stick out and stand up a little more. The tops of those two will be on a line with this. So this is the basic shape of the building. Um, I think I've got pretty much everything on there and when I go in with the pen I can refine some things and change things and yeah, um, kind of do what I need to to make it look right. I'm going to spend a little bit more time playing with my pencil lines, 
just taking out the ones I don't need and making sure that the ones that I've got are in, are in the, exactly the right place. The last thing I want to do is I want to decide whether I'm putting in this like iron fence and I think I will because the top of it is kind of coming like in it's in an S shape but it's quite flat at the top like that and then the bottom kind of mirrors that but comes out a bit further a bit lower down and then I can put in all of the uprights on the fence there. That's quite nice, I quite like the curve of that. Right, I'm going to go away, refine a few things and then I'm going to come back when I'm ready to put in my pen work. So I've got all my pencil lines in where I want them to be and I'm going in with a pen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do two passes. I'm going to do like pretty much going over the pencil lines, getting kind of everything roughly in the right place. And then I'm going to go over again and start adding all the little frilly details and things. I might do some of the details the first time round because I do get a little bit carried away. Uh, but on the whole, I'm going to kind of leave them for the, for the second pass. So I'm starting out kind of going with the, the, the very obvious lines I can see on the building. If there's anything that kind of goes all the way from top to bottom or all the way from right to left, then those are the kind of things I like to get in and then start filling in. Um, and I'm going to put like a plain rectangle where a window goes and then on the second pass, I'll go through and add all of the little details. The first lines on something always feel like a big deal, like there's no going back now. where I'm sure of the line I'll put it in pretty strongly but if I'm not sure I'll kind of lighten my touch with the pen and let it kind of trail off a little bit so if I'm not quite sure where a line ends then I'll just be a little more delicate with it and then I can it gives me a little bit of a leeway to fix it later on if I've got it in the wrong place so I'm going to speed the footage up a little bit now uh, because this is probably going to take me quite a while and uh, yeah I'll just I'll speed it up so you can watch me uh, kind of carry on through the process but it's not the video is not going to take 2 hours pencil sketch ended up kind of yeah it, not, it ended up not really matching what I was sketching and what I was seeing so I've, um, I've rubbed it out and I'll, I'll have another go at it I 
ended up drawing this little bit lower than I meant to and then just going, oh it'll be okay, I'll be fine. See there's, I need to follow that line there. That's better. And then a one on top. I'm going to try and fix this just by giving it a double line, making that one a little higher, that one a little lower, and coming in with this from the top. And by the time we've got our little detail lines and stuff in here, it's not going to be so noticeable. to see what's going on here but every line that's of the roof line that's kind of heading in this direction I'm he heading towards this kind of imaginary vanishing point that I've got over here just off the page and then the ones that are going this way are heading towards this vanishing point but I'm just kind of I'm not necessarily drawing them in I'm just kind of practicing the motion with my arm before I then draw it so I'll kind of get the sense of it being in the right direction. And this edge of the building is kind of, it's off in the distance and it's indistinct so I'm just putting a few kind of disjointed lines in to kind of give that sense of like the edge of the building there but actually my focus is going to be on this kind of part of the building here so there's lots of kind of detail on this side but I can't really see it very well so um, so yeah so there'll be some like hints and suggestions of windows and things but not as much um, detail as there is on this side. So that's my first pass over and I've got like the basic shapes in there and I've got all of these windows and the doors and uh, there was a few points of places where I couldn't help myself and started adding hinges onto the door here and all sorts of things. But um, what I'm going to do now is remove the pencil lines and see if there's anything obvious that I've kind of forgotten or missed and then um, it's the time to start fiddling. And I'll show you a little bit of each bit that I do, but uh, again I'm going to speed up a lot of the footage because it'll take a long time. Okay, windows. I'll show you these two because um, because the other ones have got grills in front of them and, and things like that and they're not quite so easy. Uh, but for this what I want is I want to be able to show that the windows are recessed a bit. So I'm going to put in a line at the top and the left hand side and here a line at the top and the left hand side and it'll just look like they're set back a bit and then again with my kind of pen practicing where the where that vanishing point is I'm going to lightly put in lines for the centers of the windows which is where the sash bar is and then I can start putting in or details for each of the window panes and what I'm going to do for these is see they've got three across and two, four down and the right one is kind of kind of disappear um, kind of behind this line here because the windows set back again so I'm not going to see the edge of this kind of third one so um, so yeah, it doesn't matter if they're a little bit wonky. Um, I'm going to try when I paint to reserve this white space around the little window panes just to make them look like they're kind of painted white and you've got that nice highlight there. And then 
and then there's a bit more space at the bottom of the window. I can put a little line at the bottom and the side and then put the panes in for the bottom bit of the window. And again, that third one's disappearing off the edge. There we go, little wonky window. Um, and then the second one, panes at the top. And it is kind of hard to judge how high they need to be and how wide. Um, put some pencil lines in if you're concerned about that, but I don't mind them looking a little bit wonky. for some frilly bits. So I've got this balcony here and it's got some nice wrought iron decoration on there so I want to get at least some of that in or a little hint of it so it might just be a few scribbles but uh, there's a sense that it's not just kind of straight lines. So this is quite a fun little sign. It's got lots of scroll work in the hangary bit. And then there's a picture of the writer at his desk. So again, I can't see too much detail here, but I can get a sense of how it's looking by putting a few little scribbly lines in it and then there's the hanging sign underneath and there's the writer's desk there's the manuscript he's working on and he's sitting in a chair and you see you don't need like a lot of detail just a few kind of scribbly lines in the right direction and you get something that looks roughly like the thing you're drawing. Now I've gone over and I've removed any of my pencil marks so I can be really sure that um, anything that's left on here is pen, it's permanent and um, yeah it's going to be in the final painting, drawing painting. The thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to start adding uh, bits of the stonework and bits of the texture. Now this is really quite time consuming. So I'm just gonna show you a tiny little bit of what I'm doing and then I'll carry on, uh, do the rest and then come back when I'm ready to paint. Uh, one of the features of these old town buildings is that the stonework, there's nice big blocks on the corners of the building, kind of giving it support and structure. And they, are quite solid and quite square. They might be a little irregular, but they're kind of big stone blocks and essentially they're kind of holding the building up. So I'm putting in 
not I'm not kind of counting every block and making sure I've got the right number, but I'm kind of looking at the shapes of them and making sure that they kind of fit. Like this. And I'm going to go up the sides of the buildings and do that. And then in between, there's much more angular stonework. So I'm filling in very lightly. I'm not using a lot of pressure. Just some rough stones that are much more, they're often smaller, they're angular, they kind of um, a lot less square. And some areas have got lots of like little stones kind of shoved in together. And then other areas have got more like bigger ones. Um, and then they're kind of, yeah, they're unevenly distributed. So I am, um, oh, there's a big one in there. I'm gonna do that all over the building. The thing you want to be sure of with these big blocks is that the lines of them, the tops and the bottoms of them, follow those lines to the vanishing point that you've got in the rest of the building, otherwise things will look a little bit off. You don't need to be exact because it's an old building and it's not exact, but if you kind of roughly follow the rest of the lines at that point in the building, then you will kind of get the, the, the sense of it looking kind of realistic. Um, and if you need to re-put those vanishing points and lines back in with pencil, then uh, make sure you do that. So this is what it looks like now I've put in that stonework all over the building. So around each of the windows, there's that kind of like dressed stone. On these kind of fancy bits, there's even more of it. So there's more straight lines in there. And then uh, the kind of the filler in bits are kind of just a bit, a little bit more scribbly and and a little bit random. And then I've kind of faded out the marks as I've kind of gone into the distance because you'd you'd see less detail as you went that way. Um, so yeah, so just a few marks just to kind of show the direction lines, but not a lot going on there. Um, but yeah, a lot more detail and I've paid a lot more attention to the kind of the shapes of the stones in the bit that's kind of like closest to you. I'm going to scan this now as it is because I've been asked for like uncoloured versions that you could print out and watercolour yourself. So I'll be um, adding a few of those to my Etsy store. Um, so I'm going to scan this so that I'll be able to, to do that and provide those for you. And, um, and yeah, and then I'll come back and show you the colour. Right, it's time for colour. And I'm pretty much going to be using two colours. So I've got Burnt Umber, which is a nice brown, kind of warmish brown. And then I've got uh, French Ultramarine. So it's kind of a mid blue. And when you mix them together, you get like a neutral gray. These are really good colors to kind of pair together. Um, you can mix pretty much any blue and brown together, but if you get the kind of wrong combination of colors, you can end up looking a little bit greeny. And then you kind of end up, oh, I'll add some red in to counteract the green. It can be a bit of a faff, but burnt umber and French ultramarine um, always work really nicely. And the building that I'm painting has got some uh, lighter stonework. It's got some darker stonework. It's got some grayer bits. It's got some kind of more goldy bits. So I'm creating a little puddle here that's got more of the brown on one end more of the blue on the other and I can dip into different parts of this. I can also add more or less water to give me lighter or darker colours. Oh, wrong colour. Try that. So I'm going to paint all of the stone with my size 6 brush. Um, you could use a larger one if you wanted to and I'm going to kind of vary the colours a little bit. So some of them will be lighter, some of them will be darker, some of them will be bluer, some of them will be browner. And add a fair bit of water in. because I don't want it to be too dark to start with. So I'm going to start at the top and work down.
all my stone is painted in, I've got to decide what I'm going to do at the uh, base here. And um, sometimes I just leave it as it is. Sometimes I like to kind of just connect it to the ground a little bit and maybe use some like the side of my brush to get a bit of texture there. And then I'm going to put in like a swoosh around here where the kind of stone wall there is and just have it fade out into the foreground. Now I ended up adding a little bit of the quinacridone gold into that colour just because I accidentally added some to start with and I thought it looked quite good so I kept going. Um, but you'll so you'll see there's a mix of like yellowy, goldy, um, kind of um, bluey, browny tones in the in the painting. For my roof, I'm using a mix of the same colours, but I'm using slightly more blue in there because I want to get like a nice slaty grey, and I've um, I've used a little bit less water this time, so it's going to be a little bit darker. And then I'm just going to paint in this lovely kind of bell shape on the top. The little spiky bit. And then this bit of roof here. Now this roof has some um, terracotta ridge tiles, uh, which I might put in separately. And then I just looked to see if there's anywhere else on this uh, image that I kind of need the same colours. And just a little bit down there, on that top of the bit there. And then this door up here, there's a door out onto the balcony and that's like a dark grey as well. That might be a bit darker than that. Maybe I'll add a little bit more blue in just to give it a little bit of distinction. And then on this kind of balcony thing um, is that sort of grey as well. While I'm here, I'm going to paint a little shadow inside the door, a little darker at the top, just spot a little bit of extra colour in at the top. And oh yes, this, this little door up here is similar as well. So that's the same kind of bluey grey colour. So again, a little bit more blue into my mix. And I'll just paint that little door in up there. And then I'm going to do the windows. So most of the windows are just going to be uh, dark grey. So I can use the same mix, um, maybe a little bit more pigment again get it nice and dark and maybe on the bluish side. And then for some of these ones in the middle, I'm going to put some like lighty bits in there, but let's start with the dark ones first. And for this, I'm going to change to my smaller paintbrush. Right now these ones in the middle, the top's all dark. And then the bottom one has just a little bit of light in it. So I'm just going to introduce a little bit of this quinacridone gold in there. And then go in next to it with some of that kind of grey blue as well. There we go. It's just a little bit of a glow in that one. I'll do the same in this one here. I'm going to use the same kind of colour here for the sign, which is like a gold coloured sign. So I'm painting it with this quinacridone gold 
And this is a really interesting colour because when you use it without much water, you get like a really kind of orangey kind of colour. When you add a little bit more water into it, you get a bit more of a, um, yeah, a bit more of a yellow. And then again, some of that dark and just put that in on the sign just to give it a little bit of shadow in a couple of places and to dull that gold down a little bit. I've got a few windows on this side that I want to low light. So I'm just going to put some swipes of that dark mix down there. Like that. I've got a few like bits on the roof that would be like a darker grey. I've got some chimneys here. Now the chimneys would be, there are like terracotta. Um, if I just use straight burnt umber, then I'm not adding an extra colour in because they're tiny. So I kind of want them to blend with everything else. And I can use that same terracotta for the ridge tiles on the roof. So I'll try and get a nice steady hand and draw my brush along there. Um, I've got all of the kind of colour on that I want, but I want to give it a bit of depth as well. So I'm going to add some shadow. And again, I'm using exactly the same colours. So some burnt umber, some French ultramarine, a little bit more French ultramarine, and a little bit of water. I'm using my small brush and I'm going to um, run a line of it underneath anything that sticks out. So I can start at the top and put a line of shadow underneath this kind of tower. And I'm just layering that colour over the top of like everything that's there. Um, the same under this ridge, the roof ridge here. A nice line of shadow underneath there. And in fact, that's quite a deep shadow. So let's add a little bit more colour into there. Um, there's this like decorative line of stonework here. So we'll put some shadow under that. So there's this little balcony thing. There's this door and it's got a shadow there and down that side. This little window has a shadow underneath it too. There's a little window there, has a bit of shadow. Um, there's this line around here. There's this line around here. There's another line there. Each of these little should I call them chess pieces? There's little bits of shadow underneath. And then, and a few like in between as well. There's a bit there. And a bit more on this side. And then, yeah, there's like quite a lot of shadow underneath this balcony area. This whole thing here can be painted in shadow colour. And that comes down like quite a way, like onto those windows. It's a bit underneath this window here. Shadow under there. And the more shadow that you put on things, the more like they look like they're deeply recessed. So that's still a little bit damp, but I want to come in and add even more shadow onto those windows. 
Oh, yeah, there's that door there. So I'm going to keep going and adding a little bit of shadow under every window, under every bit of decorative stonework, and um, I'm going to speed up the footage and uh, come back to you when I'm done. So there is my writer's museum um, all finished um, and I've got um, I've got a shadow underneath all of those like window areas and everything. Um, occasionally I, keep, I see a new one and I might add a bit more but I think that's it. Um, sometimes if I'm doing a building in perspective like this and I'm doing two kind of really obvious faces there'll be one that's really obviously in shadow and I'll paint a wash of a shadow colour all over that face of the building. It wasn't quite so obvious in this one so I think I'm going to leave it. So there'll be a link in the description box to the reference image for this photo if you want to paint along with me. And if you do and you want to share your work with me, then uh, you can post it on Instagram and tag me at Lou Rachel Davis. So I look forward to seeing those. So I'm going to put a print of this up on Etsy in the next few days uh, when I've had time to um, scan and process it. And there are prints up there from uh, of quite a few of the other works that I've done in this series and some of the buildings from Edinburgh as well. Thanks very much for watching today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this and I hope that it's inspired you to paint buildings, not just this building, but other buildings in your area and things that you find interesting, quirky, unusual. And uh, and yeah, I hope that it, it helps with the talk about perspective and kind of getting something that looks realistic. So if you've liked the video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more from me, then do subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you again in another video very soon. Bye bye.